our title bout. We have a big one on deck for you tonight. Yuri and Duhar coming in from Reading, Pennsylvania. He is taking on Irvin Gonzalez Jr. This one for the WBC Youth Featherweight title. Let's take a look at what both fighters had to say coming into this bout. My name is Irvin Gonzalez from Worcester, Massachusetts. My name is Yuri Duhar. Vengo representando a República Dominicana. Hace dos años que vine de República Dominicana a ejercer mi carrera profesional de boxeo aquí en Estados Unidos. Esta es mi primera pelea por el título. Le doy muchas gracias a Dios porque me ha ayudado, me ha mantenido firme hasta ahora, gracias a Dios. Y vamos a dar lo mejor que tenemos. We're in a world title fight now. Even though it's a youth world title, it's still a world title. It's a different atmosphere when you're in there because there's obviously something on the line. Um, but you gotta fight hard in there. You gotta keep fighting until they win that last belt. Tradición de la pelea de ahora. Esta pelea de ahora va a ser una pelea buena. Yo me quito que está rangeado ya. Viene con 13 peleas y dos perdidas. Y yo estoy subiendo. Y vamos a subir rangeado también. Vamos a pelear con él. I know he comes forward a lot, comes with throws a lot of punches. He hasn't fought anybody with the power that I have. I'm taking him out with him four rounds. And that's giving him a little bit. I'm telling you, it's going to be quick. Ganar este título lo hace por mi carrera. Es como Dios abrirme una puerta para mí y para mi familia. Y le doy muchas gracias a Dios por todo lo que está haciendo conmigo y por lo que va a hacer. Y muchas gracias a Dios y al club de Tineo Bosi. You know, winning a world title, my, my first world title in my city, can't ask for anything more. All right, we're back ringside at the Palladium in Worcester, Massachusetts, about to get ready for our co-main event bout of the evening. And Ray, we did have a chance to see both fighters in action on the December 7th card at Foxwoods Resort Casino. That one was also on UFC Fight Pass. And the big takeaway there for Yuri and Duhar was the win over Nathan Martinez, the previously undefeated fighter. Yuri and Duhar more accustomed to fighting at 122 pounds. He had stepped up in his previous bout to 126 to fight CES stablemate and teammate of Nathan Martinez, yep. Ricky Del Santos, and that was in Rhode Island at Twin River Casino. And Del Santos really made easy work of Andujar, which kind of surprised me to see how Andujar responded. And maybe that weight class that dropped back down was the difference. Maybe the speed more of a factor, maybe not the power of the opponent. But what were the different takeaways there in those two fights between how Andujar looked against Del Santos and how he looked against Martinez? I believe styles make fights. And I believe the, it's not the weight for your do your during. I believe it's styles. So I think with, the, with um, this style here, I think the, the weight's going to help him. And um, I, I honestly think he, he might pull out this win for this fight. This could be a very big one for Yuri and Duhar. The title's on the line. We're about to kick it up to our ring announcer, Adam Palacio, for the official introductions for our co-main event. Time now for our co-main event, eight rounds for the vacant WBC World Youth Featherweight title. Let's welcome our first fighter to the ring, ladies and gentlemen, Yuri and Duha. Here he comes, Yuri and Duhar from Dominican Republic, who now lives and trains in Reading, Pennsylvania, fighting out of Taneo Boxing Gym. They have a stable of young fighters there. They run a lot of events in the Dominican Republic, a great group of young fighters they have coming up through the ranks. And Duhar may very well be the brightest star among those fighters managed by Antonio Taneo. We've now seen him twice already. This is his third consecutive appearance with CS Boxing. He's starting to become almost a fan favorite yes. when he goes on the road now. People remember who he is. I think he's and, comfortable yeah, now. Yeah, and he is comfortable in the ring, comfortable with the promotion, comfortable with this New England area. And that can sometimes play a factor too. There's a level of comfortability there for Andujar. We'll see if it does play a difference tonight. And his opponent making his way to the ring, Irvin Gonzalez Jr. And here 
is Worcester's own Irvin Gonzalez Jr. Also big fight for him tonight, Ray. This is the one he's been searching for for quite some time. Irvin has had some personal problems outside of the ring. He spoke openly about that. He's back on track now. He's got his father in his corner, has the same team he's had really since day one. Here's a fighter who competed alongside his teammate Jermaine Ortiz in the Olympic trials in 2016. They've come up together. He's grown up with many of these fighters in Worcester and now gets a chance all together on the same card. And it's Gonzalez's turn tonight to go for the gold here in the WBC Youth Featherweight World title. Big fight for him. He's coming off a big win in December. Boy, who knows what to expect in this one? I think this one's 50-50, Ray. I, I think the winner of this fight is be the word for me is comfort. Who is more comfortable today? Irvin, who who is back home, or is it the other the other gentleman, um, in Doha, who more comfortable fighting here for his third time on CES? All right, let's send it over to the tail of the tape. This is our co-main event of the evening, live on UFC Fight Pass. And this one for the WBC Youth Featherweight Championship, brought to you by Russo's Italian Restaurant. You have Irvin Gonzalez Jr., the hometown hero, 13 and two record. He came in at 125 yesterday, facing Yuri and Duhar, five and two with three wins by knockout. He weighed in at 126. Well, let's send it up to Adam Palacio for the official introduction. This is the Russo Italian Restaurant co-main event bout of the evening for the vacant WBC World Youth Featherweight title being presented by Mr. Michael George from the WBC. This fight is scheduled for eight rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks. He weighed in at 126 pounds. His pro record, Five wins, two losses, with three big victories coming my way of knockout. Hailing from San Cristobal, Dominican Republic, ladies and gentlemen, Yuri Andua. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white and pink trunks, he weighed in at 126 pounds. His pro record, 13 big victories, two losses, and 10 finishes coming by way of knockout. Hailing from Worcester, Massachusetts, ladies and gentlemen, Irvin Gonzalez Jr. Your referee for this title fight is Mr. Kevin Hope. Okay, gentlemen, you've already had your instructions. I expect a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourselves at all times. Watch your heads coming in. Nothing behind the heads. No low blows. Touch them up. Good luck. All right, this one should be as good as advertised between Irvin Gonzalez Jr. and Yuri and Duhar. And Duhar coming in two weeks' notice, accepting the bout coming off his big win in December over Nathan Martinez. That bumped his record of five and two. And here we are now, round one of a scheduled eight. Once again for the vacant WBC Youth Featherweight World title. And you are stepping up four pounds in weight to take on Gonzalez. Nice action here early on, Ray. And do I do what he does, he comes forward and throws big bombs. You are going to the body early. Now Gonzalez spins him out back against the ropes. Like I said earlier, who's going to take who out of your comfort zone? This is what this fight, I believe, is going to end up to. Who's going to take who out of your comfort zone? The kind of action we expected. We're getting it early on here in the first 40 seconds. Gonzalez trying to go with that uppercut. Uh, boxing on some interesting angles here, trying to spin and do hard. Keep the ball balance. And when Duhar gets Gonzalez into the corner, Gonzalez fighting effectively out of that corner. Once again, we're live on UFC Fight Pass. Big right cross there by Gonzalez. Nice job boxing on the inside. A lot of clinching here, right? These guys are fighting in a phone booth. You can tell right now, a lot of, a lot of mis hatred in there probably. You know, they're fighting inside, working the body, working back up top. I, I like to see, you know, either one 
Step back with that right here. Step back with that jab right here. They both want to demand who's going to be the one inside. Both are just bullying their way on the inside, which is leading to a lot of clinches, a lot of short punches. Referee warning in Duhar about the blows to the back of the head. Gonzalez hands a nice one-two combo there. Minute and a half to go in round number one. Once again, Michael Parenti joined by Super Ray Oliveira. It's our co-main event of the evening. Urban Gonzalez Jr. taking on Yuri and Duhar. Action-packed bout. Look at these two go to war here in the first round, Ray. They definitely want to want to give them the, this, this is the fight. <laughs> they both want that belt. This is the one that's been advertised for quite some time when it was announced that Irvin would be fighting for the youth featherweight title. The only issue was the opponent. Irvin shouldn't be dropping his hands. He should be keeping his hands up tight and, and coming back, back in, um, in Doha back up. He, he's, he's, he's standing on the ropes. He's got his hands low. He's going to get hit. A couple of nice body blows by Andujar as he has Gonzalez against the ropes. But Gonzalez every so often landing, covering up nicely. Intense action here in this first round, and we still have seven more to go here in your co-main event on UFC Fight Pass. Gonzalez, by the way, in the pink and white trunks. Andujar in the white with the black lettering. Referee now giving a warning about the holding. Nice left hook there by Gonzalez out of the clinch. Now Gonzalez letting his hands go. Definitely, definitely, definitely. He's got to do He's got to come forward. Bell rings for round number one. Gonzalez gives a quick glance on the way back. What a first round, right? That was tough to score. It was definitely a great round. It was, it was give and take, but I give it, I give it more to um, Gonzalez. He, he, he took the first 35 seconds, 45 seconds, and took the last 10 seconds. You see Gonzalez's corner, his father, Irvin Gonzalez Sr. Brendan Cole, his longtime putt man. Take a look back here at some of the action from round one. Ray, it was just all action. Irvin Gonzalez doing a nice job defensively, but Enduar has some moments there against the ropes. That, that's, what, that's what Irvin shouldn't be. He shouldn't be with his back against the ropes. He's looking much better as he comes forward and landing those left hooks to the top of his head. And Duhar, as we mentioned, one of the few times in his career where he is stepping up to fight at 126. And sometimes, Ray, when you're at 122, it's hard to get fights. You have to step up and wait occasionally now and then just to stay active. And Duhar has done that. We referenced that he did fight at Twin River Casino last year against Ricky Del Santos, who's a natural 126 pounder, and uh, suffered a hard luck loss in that one, but came back nicely when he dropped down to 122 and took out Nathan Martinez and Foxwoods. And now round two underway, Gonzalez coming up fast and furious here in the opening seconds. That's what he has to do. He has to come forward and let those hands go. But don't let Andujar come forward and command the fight. you got to take control of it. The thing about Andujar, though, is he's elusive, he's slick, and just when you think he may get overwhelmed, he starts to come back with a flurry of his own. And he can, like you said, Ray, during the broadcast, he kind of fights in spurts, right? Yes, definitely. He's, he fights in spurts. You, you, you look like you, you seem like you got him, and then suddenly he just bursts out and comes. He comes back with his own combinations. It may even be a tactic to sort of lull the opponent into that false sense of security, and then he lets his hands go quickly with three, four punch combos. We've seen it from Andujar in the past, and we've seen enough of Andujar in recent fights with CES to kind of have an idea of what the game plan is when he comes in there. Both guys fast, both guys elusive. And both guys like to let their hands go. It makes for a great action-packed battle. We're getting our money's worth so far. Like I said the last fight, we got a guy who took a fight on short notice. You don't want them to gain their confidence. So jump on them right away. Gonzalez is jumping them right away. Back them all, took the combinations. Let me know if you've been in the gym all the time or you haven't been in the gym. And Duhar goes down from a right hand, but the two had gotten tangled up before that, so that will not be scored a knockdown. Yes, I call that more of a push. You know, he landed a punch, but he, he tripped over his left foot and pushed him. Agreed. Action resumes here. A minute and a half to go in round two. Urban Gonzalez in the pink and white trunks, taking on Yuri and Duhar in the white. And Gonzalez laying some shots here, Ray. He's got Duhar a little off bounds here in the final minute. But he's throwing wild. I just wanted to calm more down. Come have calm aggression. Just under a minute to go in round two. You are watching your co-main event on UFC Fight Pass. Michael Parenti bringing you all the action with Super Ray Oliveira. 
We still have one more bout to go after this, our main event, Jamino Ortiz, and Luis Ronaldo Castillo. But right now, it's Gonzalez and Andujar putting on a show for this heavily pro-Gonzalez crowd in Worcester. Just the first time Gonzalez has fought here since 2017. Yeah, that straight left hand, Rocky Andujar. He's lefty right now, so the straight left is not working for him. It looks like Gonzalez is settling into a nice groove here right in the second round. I hope we can keep this pace up. Tough pace to maintain over the course of eight rounds. But again, just when you think that Nduhar may be backpedaling around the defense, if he comes back with this with a flutter of his own, gets Gonzalez against the ropes. Gonzalez spins him out the back of the gonna, corner. Gonzalez should take his space and, and work. Wild action, tough to keep up with through two rounds, but it's been highly entertaining just as we expected in our co-main event. When you have a belt on the line, right, you break out all the stops. These two are emptying the entire playbook in just two rounds. Yes. From the, 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 the wrestling inside and those elbows are, are hitting each other. As you can see, when you go back to it, Gonzalo's got a cut on top of his, his uh, forehead. And those are the, they're both roughing with the elbows. Right. As you see, they come in right now. You saw some of that early action. Three of four solid landed right hands by Gonzalez early in that second round. Really, I thought helped him establish that pace. And it looks like Gonzalez is off to a good start here in this fight. But again, Andujar is crafty, he's slick. He's known to come on late in fights. And he certainly did that against Nathan Martinez back in December at Boxwoods. So we know what he is capable of. And this time around has eight rounds now and really six more to figure things out as we start to creep close to the midway point in this fight. Round three about to begin to your co-main event. Michael Parenti, Ray Oliveira, live from the Palladium in historic downtown Worcester, Massachusetts. We are live on CBS Fight Pass, brought to you by CBS Boxing. Duhon ripping some shots to the body. I want to see who can keep this pace up. And they keep this pace up for eight rounds. This will be an epic fight. This could go down as one of the best CES has had in quite some time if this continues along this pace, right? These two are showing no signs of slowing down. And Duhai on the offense again, but here comes Gonzalez. Somebody's bleeding here. You mentioned that Gonzalez had a small cut. I think both, both, might be both banged fighters up too. are cut. Yeah. It's Gonzalez on top forehead, and Duha on his, his right, right eyebrow. And I don't think neither one is from a punch. It's either a headbutt or the elbow. Because right. they're wrestling inside. They're, they're fighting close. They're kind of rubbing heads against each other. Their foreheads rub. Sometimes it opens up a cut. Lefty, that left hand is beautiful. Stay lefty and let that left hand go straight. They have a timeout here. I believe the referee might want the position to take a look at this cut on Anduhar's right eye. Right, it looks like it's more on the eyebrow right toward the end, on the outside of the eye. Doctor's shaking his head almost as if he's wondering, why am I looking at this cut? This is fine. You know, you know it's the referee's job to, to, sure. to take care of the fighter. It's the doctor's job to make sure the fighter's okay, and he did. Like you said, it's on the outside of the right eye. It's not above it where your blood runs into your eyebrow, your, your eye, so it's on the outside, so he's okay. Solid action again here. Gonzalez for a second looked like he might have Andujar backed into the ropes, which could be considered a knockdown if you're sitting on the ropes, but Andujar popped up. Andujar, big left hand there by Gonzalez. I, I would like him to stay lefty and let that left hand straight down the middle. Starting to wonder, Ray, if he's wearing down Andujar. His pace is starting to slow. Gonzalez going to the body. Another big left hand, another one. And it looks like things have sort of come to a grinding halt here late in this third round. They gave us a good 45 minutes, the rest of his wrestling. <laughs> they gave us Hagler Hearns, right, for the first two rounds. Yes. And you know that pace is hard to keep up, but we'll see if this plays into it as we get toward the middle rounds, if we get that far. But it looks like Gonzalez taking over a bit here in round number three, but Andujar just continues to press forward in this WBC featherweight title bout. Just when you think Andujar doesn't have anything Gonzalez left to take. Turn it. Come to a grinding halt here late in this third round. They gave us a good 45 minutes, the rest of his wrestling. They gave us Hagler Hearns, right, for the first two rounds. Yes. And you know that pace is hard to keep up, but we'll see if this plays into it 
as we get toward the middle rounds, if we get that far. But it looks like Gonzalez taking over a bit here in round number three, but Andujar just continues to press forward in this WBC featherweight title bout. Just when you think Andujar doesn't have anything Gonzalez left to take. Turn him. Yeah. Le that straight left is, is digging over the top. He's gonna come back with a right hook. And, and Duhar continues to just press forward. And Gonzalez popped one in there on the break. Referee kind of gave him the evil eye there to warn him. Final 10 seconds of round three. But a wild pace here. Both players stumbling toward the corner. Both fighters are getting uh, tied, and that's where they're sure. during the stops. It's getting a little bit chippy there, Ray. And you saw at the end of the round, Gonzalez kind of had and Duhar hooked under that right arm. And Duhar's corner popping up on the canvas here to protest. Doctor still taking a look at that cut, but quickly retreats here. Jose Vargas, who is the lead trainer for Lorette Stewart, working the corner there for Yuri and Duhar, working on those cuts. See in Duhar, you see uh, Gonzalez's father, Irvin Gonzalez Sr., with some instruction here. And is that left hand again, left. Ray? Yeah. You gotta let Yuri come forward. Let him come forward. He's, he's running into your straight left hand. So let him run forward and let that straight left hand go and, and right hook. You're back in a row. Dirty boxing. That's what we call it. Dirty boxing. Rubbed him with elbows, his shoulders. He's, he's roughhousing you. When I think of that, I always think of the great Bernard Hopkins, who knew all the oh, tricks, right? Yes, yes. But on the inside, he knew how to rough you up. And he did it with near perfection over the course of his brilliant career. And here we are now in round four of our co-main event. Michael Parenti joined by Super Ray Oliveira live on UFC Fight Pass. Irvin Gonzalez in the pink and white trunks taking on Yuri and Duhart in the white and black. And Duhart stumbling from that forward. left. Yeah. Let him come forward. He's there for you. This one, eight rounds scheduled for the WBC World Youth Featherweight title. Currently vacant. Most likely going home with somebody tonight. And Duhar landing during the clinch. Referee warns him, separates him, then resumes the action. Two minutes to go here in round four. So this is where Gonzalez don't want to be. He, he's letting him lay on him in roughhouse, and that's more tiring. Don't wrestle with him. Sure, and also when you get in that clinch like there, Gonzalez can't let his hands go, which no. he's been effective in doing so. Let the referee do his job by, by letting him hold you, and the referee will break it up. Keep him on the outside, let that jab, that right hand jab go, and straight left down the middle. Gonzalez back to southpaw, we'll see if he lets that left hand go. Left and right combo, that left hand. There you go. Snapping in Duhar's head back now halfway walk him through down. round four. Walk him down with that jab. And again, it's worth mentioning, and Duhar fighting four pounds heavier than normal at 126. Stepping up for the opportunity to win the title. Bit of a stumble there. They're going to call that a slip. As in Duhar's feet got tangled up. Referee on top of it. 119 to go here in round four. This one's scheduled for eight. It's been action-packed from the opening bell. As Irving Gonzalez tries to bring home the youth featherweight title, he could join his teammate, yes. Jermaine Ortiz, who is the WBC youth lightweight champion in Ray. If Gonzalez were to win that title, both he and Ortiz would be the only United States born youth champions in the WBC. Very interesting fact. Both, both from Worcester. champions and both from Worcester, <laughs> and both under the promotional guidance of CES Boxing. Gonzalez also aiming to become only the fourth youth WBC title holder in CES history, joining the aforementioned Ortiz, Chad Dawson, and Matt Remillard, all who won youth titles under the CES banner. So history possibly in the making here tonight in Worcester. It definitely will be. So Gonzalez is now at his comfort. Second, looked like he might have Andujar backed into the ropes, which could be considered a knockdown if you're sitting on the ropes, but Andujar popped up. And Duhar, big left hand there by Gonzalez. I, I would like him to stay lefty and let that left hand straight down the middle. Starting to wonder, Ray, if he's wearing down in Duhar. His pace is starting to slow. Gonzalez going to the body. Another big left hand, another one. And it looks like things have sort of come to a grinding halt here late in this third round. They gave us a good 45 minutes, the rest of his wrestling. 
They gave us Hagler Hearns right for the first two rounds. Yes. And you know that pace is hard to keep up, but we'll see if this plays into it as we get toward the middle rounds, if we get that far. But it looks like Gonzalez taking over a bit here in round number three, but Andujar just continues to press forward in this WBC featherweight title bout. Just when you think Andujar doesn't have anything Gonzalez left to take. Gonzalez's going to turn him. Yeah. Le that straight left is, is digging over the top. He's going to come back with a right hook. And, and Duhart continues to just press forward. And Gonzalez popped one in there on the break. Referee kind of gave him the evil eye there to warn him. Final 10 seconds of round three. But a wild pace here. Both players stumbling toward the corner. Both fighters are getting uh, tied. And that's where the sure. during this stops. It's getting a little bit chippy there, Ray. And you saw at the end of the round, Gonzalez kind of had it and Duhar hooked under that right arm. And Duhar's corner popping up on the canvas here to protest. Doctor still taking a look at that cut, but quickly retreats here. Jose Vargas, who is the lead trainer for Lorette Stewart, working the corner there for Yuri and Duhar, working on those cuts. See in Duhar, you see uh, Gonzalez's father, Irvin Gonzalez Sr., with some instruction here. And is that left hand again, left. Ray? Yeah. You, you got to let Yuri come forward. Let him come forward. He's, he's running into your straight left hand. So let him run forward and let that straight left hand go and, and right hook. When, they get, when he's getting inside, from your, your, your back of the ropes, he's laying on you and he's dirty boxing. That's what we call it, dirty box. Rubbed him with elbows, his shoulders, he's, he's roughhousing you. When I think of that, I always think of the great Bernard Hopkins, who knew all the oh, tricks, right? Yes, he yes. Played on the inside, he knew how to rough you up. He did it with near perfection over the course of his brilliant career. And here we are now in round four of our co-main event. Michael Parenti joined by Super Ray Oliveira live on UFC Fight Pass. Irvin Gonzalez in the pink and white trunk sticking on Yuri and Duhar in the white and black. And Duhar stumbling from that forward. left. Yeah. Let him come forward. He's there for you. This one, eight rounds scheduled for the WBC World Youth Featherweight title. Currently vacant. Most likely going home with somebody tonight. And Duhar landing during the clinch. Referee warns him, separates him, then resumes the action. Two minutes to go here in round four. So this is what Gonzalez don't want to be. He, he's letting him lay on him and roughhouse him. That's more tiring. Don't wrestle with him. Sure, and also when you get in that clinch like there, Gonzalez can't let his hands go, which no. he's been effective in doing so. Let the referee do his job by, by letting him hold you, the referee will break it up. Keep on the outside, let that jab, that, that right hand jab go, and straight left down the middle. Gonzalez back to southpaw, we'll see if he lets that left hand go. Left and right combo, that left hand there landed. You go. Snapping in Duhar's head back, now halfway walk him through down. round four. Walk him down with that jab. And again, it's worth mentioning, and Duhar fighting four pounds heavier than normal at 126, stepping up for the opportunity to win the title. Bit of a stumble there, they're gonna call that a slip. As Duhar's feet got tangled up. Referee on top of it. 119 to go here in round four. This one's scheduled for eight. It's been action-packed from the opening bell. As Irving Gonzalez tries to bring home the youth featherweight title, he could join his teammate, yes. Jermaine Ortiz, who is the WBC youth lightweight champion in Ray. If Gonzalez were to win that title, both he and Ortiz would be the only United States born youth champions in the WBC. Very interesting fact. And both both champions and both from <laughs> Worcester, and both under the promotional guidance of CES Boxing. Gonzalez also aiming to become only the fourth youth WBC title holder in CES history, joining the aforementioned Ortiz, Chad Dawson, and Matt Remillard, all who won youth titles under the CES banner. So history possibly in the making here tonight in Worcester. It definitely will be. See, Gonzalez is now at his comfort. Like I said earlier, the fight, this fight's gonna be who's gonna stay at their comfort. Gonzalez right now is at his comfort, letting, letting Yuri come inside, picking him apart. And now he's playing with him on the ropes. That cut becoming a factor for Andujar. Not in a bad spot, but definitely bloodied up. Beautiful. Just, he's not wrestling there. Let the referee do the job. 
and Gonzalez definitely, Ray, doing a better job of not getting tied up as much by Andujar. It appears now Gonzalez really establishing a nice pace here. He kind of has this fight where he wants it, Ray. If you're Gonzalez does. now, from this point, what's the strategy over the last four rounds? Just, just, just keep doing what you're doing. Let, let him come at you. Land that straight right, 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 right jab with your left hand down the middle. And, when you, and don't land them ropes. Don't keep your back against the ropes. He's tired now. He's cut. He's tired. Your confidence is there. You're, you're in comfort zone. And Duhar came down from 140 pounds to come into this fight, and that was two weeks ago. So the opportunity presented itself to fight for that youth belt, and Duhar got down in weight, actually made weight easily, and came in under the 126 pound limit yesterday at the win. It appears to be in great shape. You wonder, as we mentioned and we talked about with Loren Stewart in our opening bout, the stamina factor, right? Taking a fight on short notice, or whether you've had a long layoff. The difference here being the, the short notice factor for yes. Duhar and having to get in the gym and get that weight off. And you wonder now over these final four rounds if this is really favoring Gonzalez, who appears to be the more conditioned fighter. It's definitely favoring Gonzalez. You know, you took a f fighting short notice, I'm good for four rounds. Eight, eight championship rounds? Tough. I don't know. And at a pace <laughs> like this, certainly more difficult. Gonzalez will continue to come at him. But Duhar will do the same. And I, I don't think we've seen the last of Duhar. I'm willing to bet he's got a second win in him somewhere. We may see that later as the fight progresses. But right now, we're in round number five. So far, Gonzalez in control as he aims to become the WBC Youth Featherweight Champion. We're live here at the Worcester Palladium. On UFC Fight Pass, CES Boxing once again. See, now Gonzalez is measuring. He's measuring with yep. that jab, letting him come forward and dropping that right hand, on, straight left hand on. Michael Parenti joined by Super Ray Oliveira in our 2020 season opener for CES Boxing. Nice right hand that time by Gonzalez, switching up stances effectively. Mostly in the southpaw stance in the later rounds, but now he switches back to right hand here. Flips that left jab effectively. Do high working nice into the body. He's got to get off the ropes. Gonzalez got to stay off the ropes. He's going to use that jab from the left hand stance or all three of the stance. Stay in the middle of the ring. One thing we know is Andujar didn't come all this way to fade quietly into the night, so you know he's going to have something left at some point. Depending he's one on tough That's absolutely right. And depending on what the scorecards read or what the corner tells him as this fight progresses, if it does in fact progress, you may see a situation where Andujar has to empty out whatever's left in that tank. In the meantime, however, Gonzalez continuing to pour it on here. And Duhar, though, landing nicely, getting Gonzalez against the ropes now, pushing him through the ropes. Referee's on a, referee's on a call time here because Duhar did for a second sort of nudge him through those ropes. Nothing too serious. I am to believe that Duhar's not trying to be dirty. It's a language barrier here. He doesn't speak English, so he's probably not understanding what the referee's saying. And this is his style too, Ray. This is how he fought against Nathan Martinez. He just simply outworked him. But against a bigger opponent, it's been a little bit tougher sledding for him. Nice left hand again by Gonzalez. He's picking him apart. He's calm and picking him apart. One thing I'm scared of is he's dropped. Gonzalez is letting his hands down to his waist. I mean, you can't, can't get punched with a wild punch. With a wild punch. And it's true, Gonzalez has been stopped before. He was stopped by Elijah Pierce when he fought at Foxwoods last year, so nothing is out of the question, especially against a game opponent like Gary and Duhar. But a Gonzalez here with the flurries. Now working the body back upstairs. Final 10 seconds. Gonzalez trying to finish this round in style. There is the final bell. Another fun round, Ray. This one's been great. I mean, it's been all action from start to finish. But Gonzalez really starting to just settle into that groove. Yes. He looks calm, which is the most important thing. It doesn't look like he's trying to get too far ahead of himself. No, he knows him straight punches are, are, are working. He's keeping them long with either left hand jab or right hand jab. Then he's coming back with that straight right hand or the straight left, whatever stance he's staying. The one twos are working. And he's doubling up his twos. As Gonzalez has progressed in his career, he has gone the distance more often. He's gone eight rounds twice. He's gone ten rounds. He's, he's, he's lining them up, lining them up. And he's hitting them with that right hand over the top. Now, the one thing we do know about Gonzalez is that stamina, not a factor for him. He 
He's gone 10 rounds in his career, went 10 rounds with Toka Khan Cleary, one of the tougher fighters in that weight class, not just New England, but anywhere. Yes, definitely. And most of his knockouts coming early in his career, as you would expect from young fighters, as they're building themselves up. And Duhar now coming out firing here in round six. Gonzalez effectively just spins him around. Duhar knows he's behind. Oh, big left hand by Gonzalez. Like you said, the rope saved yeah, him. Yeah, rope so saved him. That's a knockdown. Were it not for those ropes, and Duhar would have been flat on his back. And there's that weapon again, Ray, that straight left hand. We'll see if Gonzalez can go. finish Here him off. Here we go. And Duhar almost goes down again, stumbling again with the left hand. How is he staying up? 2.20 to go. Ruffy going to drop in. He's just jumping right now. He's getting hit with unnecessary punches. And Duhar goes down again, and that's going to do it. Irving Gonzalez is your new WBC Youth Featherweight World Champion. What a performance. CES and Wussa has two youth champions. Minor melee here in the ring after the bell, but no dispute in who gets the win here. Irving Gonzalez with the stoppage in round six. And it was that overhand right, right, that straight right hand that started with the first knockdown, and that came early in the round, which gave Gonzalez a lot of time to just pick him apart calmly, yes. not having to go out there swinging wildly and finish the fight. Here it is, right. That weapon again, Ray, that straight left hand. We'll see if Gonzalez we can go. finish him off. And Duhar almost goes down again, stumbling again with the left hand. How is he staying up? 2.20 to go. Ruffy going to drop in. He's just jumping right now. He's getting hit with unnecessary punches. And Duhar goes down again, and that's going to do it. Irving Gonzalez is your new WBC Youth Featherweight World Champion. What a performance. CES and Wussa has two youth champions. Minor melee here in the ring after the bell. But no dispute in who gets the win here. Irving Gonzalez with the stoppage in round six. And it was that overhand right, right, that straight right hand that started with the first knockdown. And that came early in the round, which gave Gonzalez a lot of time to just pick him apart calmly, yes. not having to go out there swinging wildly and finish the fight. Here it is, right. As you see, he was doubling it. He was doubling it to the body or to the head. He was straight down the middle. I almost wonder if Andujar got up too soon and maybe not taking his eight count, because he looked wobbly as he got up. And now here you see the beginning of the end here. Andujar ate some big shots. And then finally, that's all she wrote, Andujar on his back. There were some words between the corners as the final knockdown occurred. Not sure what that was about, but the word the thrown because both corners were, were yelling to stop the fight. And Durhaus corner was yelling to stop the fight. You know, and Hey, it's the referee's job. It is what it is. At the end of the day, and Duhar gets finished in round number six. A valiant effort. He came out strong. He came out fighting hard. It was the exact game plan you expected from him, Duhar. Who I thought put on one hell of a performance in this bout.